The A-10 Thunderbolt II is a plane from a completely different era, created at the height of the Cold War to destroy Soviet tanks. It had already survived several of its own funerals while wryly observing the military's futile attempts to replace it. It was as if the war itself were constantly throwing a new challenge at the A-10, forcing it back into combat. Today, with drones dominating the battlefield, the armor-piercing Warthog is once again at the center of debate. But can this 1970s-era attack aircraft become an effective drone hunter in the 21st century? The A-10 development project, better known as the AX program, was a challenge of sorts in the late 1960s. At the time, the U.S. Air Force dreamed of supersonic fighters, but a group of Fairchild Republic engineers led by Alexander Cartvelli insisted that the Army needed a slow, survivable, and inexpensive attack aircraft for infantry support. The concept was extremely simple. An aircraft capable of hovering over the battlefield, seeing the enemy, and targeting them and their equipment with minimal risk to the pilot, even if these targets came at the expense of the aircraft's speed. This is how one of the strangest, but at the same time most effective, aircraft in the history of aviation appeared. The A-10's fuselage was made not by designers, but by realistic engineers. Therefore, the pilot was placed in a titanium bathtub over 1.5 inches thick capable of withstanding a direct hit from a 23mm armor-piercing shell and even indirect hits from 57mm shell fragments. It consists of titanium plates ranging from 0.5 to 1.5 inches thick, and the armor that wraps the cockpit and parts of the flight control systems weighs over 1,200 pounds, or about 5% of the empty weight of the Warthog. Additionally, all surfaces of said bathtub are covered with a multi-layer nylon anti-splinter screen to protect against shell fragments, and the windshield and canopy are reliably protected from small arms fire. The upper part of the fuselage houses two high-bypass General Electric TF-34 GE 100 turbofan engines spaced apart on each side of the fuselage to reduce the likelihood of damage from ground debris and foreign objects when operating from field airfields, where a bird or a branch in your engine is more common than exotic. The unusual layout of the engineers allows the aircraft to be serviced without shutting them down, which in tandem with the wings located as close to the ground as possible, greatly speeds up repairs and rearmament of the aircraft. Thanks to the high bypass ratio of its engines, the A-10 has a relatively low infrared signature. Furthermore, the engines on top are ideally positioned to direct their exhaust gases over the tail surfaces, thereby protecting the Warthog from detection by enemy infrared homing surface-to-air missiles. Another piece in this Terminator we've named Warthog is its life support and fuel systems. Not only are all four fuel tanks located near the center of the aircraft and separated from the fuselage so a projectile would have to penetrate the skin before potentially reaching even the outer skin of a fuel tank, but if damaged, the Warthog's fuel lines would simply seal themselves. If the damage exceeds the tank's self-sealing capabilities, check valves will prevent fuel from entering the damaged tank. Mesh polyurethane foam will line the inside and outside of the fuel tanks containing debris and limiting fuel spills. Furthermore, the lion's share of the fuel system components are located inside the tanks to prevent the failure of any one of them from causing fuel loss and the refueling system is forcibly purged after use. In case all of the above did not prevent the aircraft from catching fire, the engines were protected from the rest of the airframe by firewalls and fire extinguishing equipment. And for the unlucky pilots who were lucky enough to lose all four fuel tanks, engineers also equipped the A-10 with two self-sealing sumps with a fuel reserve of 230 miles of flight to ensure you get back to base even in the most critical situations. What's the point of losing any fuel tanks if the entire Warthog is designed to fly with just one surviving engine, only half a tail, one elevator, and only half a wing without an engine? This is not as abstract as it might sound. In the spring of 2003, during the invasion of Iraq, Captain Kim Casey Campbell put this to the test. While flying over Baghdad, her A-10 was severely damaged by enemy anti-aircraft fire, causing its hydraulics to fail. However, Kim quickly recovered, placing the aircraft using the manual thruster and successfully flew the more than one-hour journey to Al Jaber Air Base. 
When it comes to pilot safety, few can match the Warthog and the engineering solutions the brilliant team at Fairchild Republic has equipped it with. But survivability isn't the only thing they've bestowed upon the A-10. The second, if not the first, calling card of this machine was its monstrous cannon. In 1971, the U.S. Air Force contracted with General Electric and Philco Ford to build competing gun prototypes for its AX program. These companies developed not only the gun itself, but also ammunition for it, linkless feed systems, and methods for integrating it into competing prototypes of the Northrop YA-9 and Fairchild Republic YA-10 aircraft. The gun was such an integral and impressive part of the attack aircraft that, according to the official U.S. Air Force study on the A-10's development, engineers quickly realized that rather than the gun being integrated into the airframe, the airframe was designed around the gun which weighed about 16% of the Warthog's unladen weight. This reached the point of being comical, namely the need to install a jack every time the gun had to be removed for inspection so that the A-10 would not simply tip over backwards. The winning gun, GE's GAU A-8 Avenger, a hydraulically powered seven-barrel rotary cannon, boasts exceptional firepower, 3,900 rounds per minute, and takes just half a second to reach full speed. Granted, there were some hiccups. For example, when the Avenger was first integrated into the A-10 airframe, the muzzle flash from the cannon's discharge blinded the pilot. A fatal blow to an aircraft designed for low-level, ground-bound flight. Not to mention, prolonged cannon fire left a dark, sooty coating on the forward fuselage, including the windshield, which certainly did not improve the pilot's visibility. The two most critical side effects were the sticking of gun mount components to each other due to the intense heat and friction generated by firing, and the fact that when the gun was fired, gases tended to rise up the aircraft's wings, entering the high-mounted turbofan engines, threatening to choke them. Of course, the specialists were able to solve all these problems and roll out a decent device, but the development of potential solutions to the Warthog's problems, with specifically the GAU-8, took about 10 years. Ultimately, the engineers designed it so that when the pilot pulled the trigger, the ignition system continuously activated the engine. So even if it suddenly stalled, it would restart immediately. This solution, as well as the windshield washer system, allowed the Warthog to tirelessly destroy all living things on Earth with its cannon, having successfully cured itself of its childhood diseases. But neither the impressive gun, nor decades of service, nor the successful modernization and numerous conflicts behind it could unfortunately save the A-10 from the approaching sunset of its career. Counting key initiatives, there were at least nine major attempts to retire the A-10 between 2008 and 2025. Many of these represented the Air Force's annual push to include Warthog retirement in its budget request. The arguments mainly included complaints about the A-10's outdated design, its vulnerability in a conflict with a high-tech adversary, the priority given to developing the 5th generation F-35 Lightning II fighters and then the 6th generation fighters of the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, the Warthog's network capabilities, as well as savings and the reallocation of funds to new programs. However, recent arguments from Air Force leaders have repeatedly been contradicted by the views of Congress and other services about the potential shortfall in close air support capabilities if the A-10 is rapidly retired. Moreover, congressional opposition played a significant role in the A-10 remaining in service for so long. The Air Force only began seriously retiring the A-10 in 2023. According to data released in early FY 2024, the Air Force had 218 aircraft in service, after which, in December of that year, news broke that 39 A-10s, or about 18% of the total number of attack aircraft remaining in service, had been retired. However, the remaining Warthogs in service have continued to receive one of the most powerful upgrades in recent memory, Suite 11, over the past few years, including a new high-resolution display systems, HRDS, 3D audio, jam-resistant GPS, ARC-210 radio upgrades, and most importantly, the ability to employ the GBU-39B Small Diameter Bomb, SDB. Further fueling the optimism of Warthog fans and its future is the recent inclusion of the aircraft alongside the F-16 and F-15E fighters in the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System APKWS, clearance, which is equipped with a fixed-wing air launch counter unmanned aerial systems ordnance FALCO, software-based targeting section. 
These missiles use laser guidance and a proximity fuse to detonate near subsonic, slow-moving targets such as UAVs and cruise missiles. Previously, the more advanced APKWS-2 was used by the U.S. as an air-to-air -air missile in the Middle East, where F-16s used them to shoot down Houthi drones. Interestingly enough, the price for one guidance unit and warhead is no more than $25,000, while the cost of traditional air-to-air -air missiles is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Based on this, we can conclude that the A-10 has potential as a drone hunter, its ability to hover for extended periods, fly at low altitude, and boast unique maneuverability in aerial combat could prove decisive in the destruction of attack drones, especially propeller-driven ones. Not to mention, the A-10 is capable of carrying a massive number of missiles to destroy dozens of enemy drones in a single sortie, including unmanned surface ships, which would be a particularly valuable feature in the event of a conflict in the Pacific. Many may argue that the Warthog lacks radar to detect these drones, but it's here it can very well take advantage of the services of friendly fighters and other external reconnaissance platforms, or solve the problem even more trivially by installing a guidance system on a suspended container. But perhaps the most important and only condition for turning Warthog into a drone hunter is their service life. Yes, oddly enough, the seemingly relevant and even slightly futuristic role of attack aircraft from a bygone era once again comes down to whether the U.S. Air Force's latest attempt to retire this legendary aircraft will be successful. Or will we still hear its signature in the sky even out into the 2030s? Now it's your turn to tell us what you think of the Warthog as a drone destroyer. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.